Hi everyone, this is Yanis Makula for W Plus 9 and thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I will show you how to create a unique hand-stamped pattern for your next Christmas project. I picked a few different stamp sets from W Plus 9 to create this pattern. So I'm pulling different images, different small images from four various stamp sets. Now the main stamp set that I'm using today is the new Halibor Builder stamp set that was released in September 2017. I'm going to use the flower, the Halibor flower, as well as some of the leaves from this set. Now to stamp my pattern, I'm also using images from other sets. I have one wrench that comes from the Holiday Boughs stamp set, also the Red Berries cluster that comes from the Fresh Cut Florals stamp set, and later I will use a sentiment that comes from the Iconic Christmas set. Now I'm starting to work on my panel by stamping images in groups. So I stamp a flower first, and next I add the greenery around it. So I'm framing my flower using various leaves and branches. I like to work in sections. I'm not doing any masking here, so I need to make sure that I have enough room around the flowers to fit in the leaves. This is why I'm not stamping all of my flowers at once onto my panel, but rather stamping a flower at a time and creating a greenery cluster around that flower. So I've stamped the first image and I included a couple of leaves, a branch and two berries cluster or clusters uh, around it. And I'm going to continue doing this until I fill in the entire surface of this four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel. I am using images that are layering images, meaning there are additional second and third and even fourth detail layers to some of these, but I'm not stamping them right away. So in the beginning, I'm only using the base layers and I'm only using one colors for each image. In a way, I'm first sketching out my design and once I have everything sketched out, then I will come in and add the second colors and will add the details onto my images. Now I'm using several different colors of ink from W plus nine. I'm stamping my flowers using the fairy dust ink color. Now this flower has many different layers to it. I will also use the Simon Says Stamp Fog ink color to stamp the second layer. Then I will use the silver lining color from W plus nine to stamp the third layer. And we'll also use the old gold to stamp the details on the petals. To stamp the centers for the flowers, I will be using wild mango and once again, the old gold colors. Now I do have quite a lot of green on this project and I'm using two of my most favorite green colors from W plus nine and these are the last leaf and the apple teeny colors. The leaves, some of the leaves also have a third detail layer to them. Now, because I couldn't find the best green color for this particular cluster or for this particular combo, I decided to use a gray and I actually stamped the last detail layer on my leaves using the silver lining color. To stamp the red berries, I'm using Gala Red and then adding the details using Cranberry Crush. I really like these two together. So you can see once I've stamped the initial images, the base layers onto my images, this is when I can come in and add details to these. Now it doesn't take too long to stamp a pattern like this. The time you will need to stamp this will depend on the size of the images that you use. The larger the images you use for your pattern, the less time you'll have to spend stamping it. I think it took me about 30 minutes to stamp this pattern and I really liked the way it turned out. Now I didn't do any masking to stamp this background. You can certainly do that if you'd like your leaves to be positioned closer to the flowers, but I'm not a fan of masking, so I always try to avoid using it. So since I did not use masking to create this background, I have a few gaps in between my images and I'm going to fill those in using little dots of different sizes from one of my W plus nine stamp sets. 
So I stamped a bunch of dots in two different sizes using the Cranberry Crush ink directly onto the background, filling in the blanks. If you want to spice your background panel up, you can also heat emboss some of the layers on some of these images and maybe use gold or silver embossing powder to add a bit of sparkle. I didn't do anything like that, I simply used my inks today to stamp the layers. I stamped my background onto 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half inch panel and then adhered it onto an A2 side folding card base. You can choose to stamp directly onto the card front of your card, but I prefer to stamp onto a panel and then adhere that panel onto the card base to make my card base just a bit more sturdy. To create a sentiment for this project, I decided to use a beautiful one that says, wishing you the happiest of holidays and joyful new year. And this sentiment comes from the iconic Christmas stamp set from W plus nine. This is actually one of my very first stamp sets and I, I love it to pieces. I think it's the best set for the holidays. I stamped this sentiment onto a piece of white cardstock and I actually heat embossed it using gold embossing powder. Next, I trimmed my sentiment piece into a little banner and foam mounted onto my card. I also added a little bit of red and white baker's twine and I tied it into a nice little bow. So this finishes my today's video. I hope I have given you some new ideas to try and explore. Have fun and enjoy your stamping. Thank you so much for joining me today. Be sure to check out W plus 9 for more creative inspiration. I will see you next time. Bye.